I'm gonna sit here. Okay, you sit there then. Okay. So there's been some recent changes to my film equipment recently and I thought it'd be quite good to go through and do a what's in my bag so you guys can actually see the equipment that I'm using out in the field. As you can see, I've got my sun sat here. You gonna say something? Who is it? It's all my friends on the TV. Hi. You, I, think, I think they wanna hear one of your fabulous new jokes. But I can't hear them. It's all right, they can hear you. You just tell us a joke. Okay. What do you call a dinosaur with no eyes? A, what do you call a dinosaur with no eyes? I don't know. Do you think he saw it? Oh, that's a brilliant joke. That's so, so funny. Tell your friends. So what about one of the new ones? Tell us one of the new ones. Okay. Come on. A guy walks into a bar. Ouch. Oh, that's just a perfect one. That's a brilliant one. <laughs> what about your other one? Why does the starfish blush? I have no idea. Why does he blush? Because the seaweed. <laughs> because the seaweed? Yep. Oh, you're such a funny guy. Have you got a joke for me? No, I'm, my jokes are not as good as yours, unfortunately. Where is your jokes? I don't know. I think I gave them all to you. Right, let's get on with this review, shall we? So let's start off with bags. Now, I've got two bags, and they're both made by F-Stop Gear. Daddy, I'm getting squished. I'm going to go watch things. Okay, you do that. Stop. I have this one here, which is the F-Stop Sin. And I have this one here, which is the F-Stop Tilopa. Now, one's a 60 litre and one's an 80 litre, and these are great bags. I use this mainly for kind of days out and potentially overnight trips, like a one overnight trip. And this one here, the 80 litre one, I use for multi-day trips because it's bigger. And it comes with a number of different ICU inserts that kind of slot in the back here. Basically, this lifts up and then there's an ICU where all the equipment goes. And there's different types of ICUs, like I have the Pro Large in here. Here's the Pro Small for smaller equipment. And then I have a medium sized one as well. So those are my bags. Very, very robust bags. Never had a problem with them and also extremely, extremely comfy. Daddy, I'm back. Oh, you've come back. Have you got any more jokes for us? Um, I've got lots more. Go on then. Can you tell us one? Door. Why does the horse live next door? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the neighbour! Wow, that's a brilliant joke. <laughs> now I'm going to do the chicken one. Go on, do the chicken one why then. Why does the chicken cross the road? I don't know, why does the chicken cross the road? Um, because so he gets to the side. Oh, that's such a, that's such a good joke. <laughs> God, you're a funny guy. Right then. So we'll start from the ground up and we'll start with the tripod. Now this is my tripod. This is a Sarui R3203 tripod. It's a carbon fiber eight layer tripod and it has three sections. So it's two twists out and they just come out like that. And I really like this tripod. I've used it in some really high winds and it never moves. I like it because it's got three sections, so when you want to set it up, it's nice and quick. And I think that the more sections that you have, the more unstable these tripods become. It's got feet that screw, it's got feet, they unscrew and the spikes come out. It weighs two kg and I would like to downsize this tripod if possible. I'd, I'd like a tripod around about one and a half kg. So if you guys could recommend a tripod for me that would be suitable, that would be greatly appreciated. Please leave a comment down below if you know of a tripod that you think I should check out. This is a Sarui K10 tripod head. Uh, it's a very good tripod head. It's very lightweight and it's very capable in terms of the weight. I've never had a problem with this. Um, it just looks a bit out of size on here because I've got this massive base and this little tripod on the end. So I think there's an opportunity there to save some weight for my backpacking trips. So that's my tripod out the way. So let's move on to camera gear. So here we go. So most of you will know that my camera, film camera of choice currently is the Hasselblad 503CW. Yep. Yeah, I know it's a tripod. Hey. Hang on, I'm talking to the people on the TV. I don't know, why do you ask them? What are your names? Please leave your names in the section down below. 
for my son Eddie. Can I, can, can I continue? Thank you. So as I was saying, this is my Hasselblad 503 CW and I have a number of the version four six by six backs for this. So they just come off and I have two of these. And then for the viewfinder, I have the PM45. Now this is quite a good viewfinder. It's got a times two magnification and it's got an adjustable diopter, which is why I purchased this one. I originally had the PM90, um, which is a 90 degree view. This is a 45 degree view. And the PM90 doesn't have a, an adjustable diopter. You had to purchase additional diopters and screw them in. And the one that came with mine was a neutral one. And I tried to buy another one and it didn't work. And I just ended up in a situation where I would have had to buy all of them to try and figure out which one was right for me. And it was just becoming a headache. So I ended up selling, sending that one back and I ended up picking up a PM45 and I've been very, very happy with this. So that's my Hasselblad camera. I'm going to be doing a review in this in the future, possibly in the next six or 12 months when I've been using it more extensively so I can give you guys an honest review in a similar way that I did for my Mamiya 7 review. And if you haven't checked that video out, I'll leave a link up here so you can go and check that out. So that's my Hasselblad body. I have three lenses in here as well. So we'll start off with a wide angle lens. I have the 50 millimeter CFI lens. It's a, float, a floating element, floating FLE, floating lens element lens. So it's actually got two focus rings. So it's got your normal focus ring and then it's got this other floating lens element that moves up and down depending on how close your focus distances are. So it's very good lens. I have often been asked, you know, how sharp is this lens compared to the Mamiya 750mm lens? I haven't used it enough yet to form an opinion on that, but that's possibly something I'm going to do in the future. But from what I've seen so far, this is a very capable lens and it's one of the lenses that I use the most. So in terms of my other lenses, I have the CFE 80mm lens. So this is a 40mm or 45mm equivalent, I think, on the 6x6. It's a very good lens, very sharp. Um, I use this probably about 25% of the time. Use the 50mm the most. And then the other lens that I have is the 150 millimeter lens. This is a CF lens, one of the older lenses. I've used this a few times, it seems relatively sharp. Um, and the other thing to mention, you'll notice that I have these kind of caps that, these rubber caps that go over the top. So what that is, is, is basically, I've got a, one thing to mention with these lenses is that you have to buy special adapters to get the, uh, filter holders on there. So the this one's a B60, which is a B60, and then my 50 millimeter is a B70, which is 70 millimeter. So basically, I've got a B60 step-up ring to, that's got a thread in it. Then I can then attach my normal filter holder threaded attachment to the lens. So you end up with these kind of two. It's like a dual system. Once you've got them on there, it's fine. So to save me time out in the field, you know, I don't really, when I'm in the field and I'm setting up, I don't want to be putting my lens on the camera and putting the B60 or B70 adapter on, then screwing in the lens adapter. So I basically have one for each lens and they're attached all the time. And then I have these rubber caps made by SRB and they just, they just clip over the top and then they just go in my bag like that. Now I believe that Lee makes them for their system and if you haven't got those and you use the Lee system then I you know, suggest you check those out because it will save you some time when you're out in the field. So those are my lenses, I have three of them. Um, the next thing to mention is the shutter release cable. It is a JJC shutter release cable. It's got a, I think it's called a Zeiss lock this. So you can either just go in and out and then when you unscrew it, it pops out and then it locks and then you click it and it pops out again. Uh, I quite like this one because it's got quite a big head to hold. So it's not, you know, when you've got cold hands or you've got gloves on, you can just press it and off you go. So that's a 40 millimeter one. I've got a couple of these Daddy, and I keep I a spare one in my that? back. Daddy, can I have a try Yeah, you that? can have a go, look. All you do is you press that button down. What's that this one? one, this one. Push it, go. And there it goes. And then you pop it out, press that one there. It's this? Yep, now the little silver one. This? Yep. There you go. That's it. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Daddy. Yep. When I grow up, can you buy me a 
buy me one of those? Yes, I will. You can have one. Yeah, of course you can. Can you buy me the same one as yours? Yeah, you can have one as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> then you can have to have my... Can you make my one bigger and better? We'll see about that. I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm going to give you a better one. Please. Maybe. So let's continue with the review, shall we? Um, not yet. Well, well, mm -hmm. you could have a try with my one when I grow up. Oh, that's very kind of you. So Thank now you. you can continue. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now we can continue. So, moving on. This is my new light meter. It says Conic 858D. Now, I upgraded from the 758D because this has two, two more stops of capability. And from what I've tested so far, it's definitely more sensitive in low light situations. So what I would find with my Seconic 758D is that, particularly in the blue hour when the light's just coming up, I've been metering around in the, in, in the shadow areas and it would struggle. And what I've noticed with this light meter that it doesn't struggle, it's, it's definitely been able to give me meter readings uh, in low light situations where I would normally struggle with my 758D. So I'm thinking of doing a review on this in the future. I think that it's got some, there's some opportunities for improvements when you compare it to the 758D. It's, you know, it's got this big touch screen. It's got a few buttons, but um, yeah, there's definitely some opportunities for improvement. And I think you guys might want to hear about that. So that's a review coming out in the future. Have you no, I haven't finished Have yet. You? Nearly, we're nearly, if you keep talking. Just one more question. Go on then. Um, can you give me announcing things that I just tried already? A launching one. A launching one? A launching one. A launching one? Yeah. What's that? Things that kill monsters with needles in them. Ooh, that sounds a bit gruesome. Please. Maybe later. Okay? Okay. Okay. So moving on to filters, and I often get asked about filters, so you might find this useful. Well, that's a bit awkward. I actually finished the video then and didn't even realise that my memory card on my video camera was full. So, filters. This is my filter set. I often get asked about filters. Uh, my filter pouch is made by Rugard, and in here I'm able to hold 10 filters, uh, 150 by 100 millimetres. And in here I have my filter holder, and this is my aluminium format high-tech filter, and it's... It, I actually prefer the design of the Lee filter, particularly how it's how it connects. This one is it just kind of slides on, and then it it's got a screw that screws out to lock it in place. Where the where the Lee version, the leaf, the Lee holder, um, can't, it just snaps into place, and there's less risk of the Lee one falling off. But this one, if you didn't, if you weren't prudent with your um, with how you're putting it on and making sure it was secure, it could fall off. I've never had it fall off but I could see how that could happen so this is quite good so you're able like the Lee one you're able to set it up how you want I have it set up so I can put three filters in there and then I've got the 105 millimeter polarizer adapter so I can screw polarizer on the front so just going through my filters quickly I have a 105 millimeter firecrest format high-tech firecrest polarizer and then I have a Nissi I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there's a bloody ice cream machine hanging around the neighbourhood. Thank God for that. And then I have a Nissi three-stop hard edge filter, graduated filter. And then I have a Nissi three-stop medium edge grad filter. And then moving back on to format high tech, I have a Firecrast three-stop soft edge filter. And then another Format High Tech Firecrest two stop soft edge grad filter. And then I have an ND filter, which again is a Format High Tech Firecrest, and this one is a three stop filter. And then finally, another Format High Tech Firecrest six stop ND filter. So, just if you're looking to pick up some filters, um, either Firecrest, the Format High Tech Firecrest ones, or the Nissi ones, I highly recommend those. They're all made by Scott. They're all made. They're all made with Scott Glass, and 
they have next to zero color cast, which is why I went for these filters. They're a little bit more expensive than your typical resin ones, and with resin ones, you're going to get a color cast that you have to correct. But with these ones, there's virtually no color cast, so there's no real correction needed. So just bear that in mind if you're thinking of picking up some filters. So that's my filters done. And in terms of what's in my bag currently, that's it. So this is the gear that I'm going to be working with for the next year or two. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. There are further descriptions and links in the description section down below. There are affiliate links. So if you do want to check those out and buy something, then it supports the channel a little bit. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got what you want from it. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.